in Puerto Rico. I'm extremely excited to be here. And today I'm in a very, very unique car that I never thought I would get the chance to review. And that is the freaking SRT6 Crossfire. The normal Crossfire I consider a dud because it just didn't really do much for me. The looks of it didn't do much for me. And the motor only made something like 200 something horsepower. This one makes a little bit over 300 horsepower. That's a huge jump. 100 horsepower fixes a lot of things in a car that I don't like, which sounds kind of like horsepower reliant. Not all cars need a bunch of horsepower, but this feels completely different because the motor is different. <laughs> The motor in this is actually a Mercedes engine. It's an AMG engine that's the same one you would find in the SLK, which is super strange. But when you look at the body shape of the Crossfire, you go, oh yeah, I can kind of see it. Because if you look at the SLK, it's kind of similar. So Chrysler always seems to find a way to partner up with other brands. So if you look back at DSM, you look back at the Talons and all that, it's the same exact thing. Just this time around, it was with Mercedes. And with this, the interior is very Chrysler. <laughs> you know, the steering wheel and everything is similar. It's not the same, but it's similar to the 300. The center console is this kind of brushed aluminum look in the center. The inside of the car feels very vibrish because it's a low roof line, small windshield, small windows. But the owner of this car, being so gracious, He's so cool, man. He told me this whole story about why he had it. So the Crossfire, the reason he had one was because his mom wanted one. She ended up getting the SRT6 because of his recommendation. And then later, he wanted to keep driving it. He got a GT500. She said, no, you can't keep driving it. So he just went out and bought his own. So now they have two. So they have a stock one and this one is modified. And what's also cool about this one is that the model year of this SRT6, there's only 47 of them. It's probably one of the only modified Crossfires I've ever seen. It's very rare to see these cars <laughs> modified like they are. This is actually a supercharged V6. It's not a four cylinder, it's not a V8, it's a V6. So when you see the blower hidden under all the intakes, hidden under everything, you're like, oh, I see it. I see the little ridges of the supercharger. <laughs> but it actually drives surprisingly smooth. It's not gonna like rock your socks off with the interior, but he did diamond stitching in the seats and in the door panels, and that really cleans it up. This time around, it looks factory, and that's the benefit of it, is that it doesn't look out of place. Sometimes when you see people do like VIP cars and they diamond stitch everything, it's kind of overbearing because it's like, wow, they really like diamond stitching. But in this, the colors go with the dash, they go with the gauges, everything. One of my favorite things about this though is it's called a Crossfire, right? Well, since it's a modified supercharged Crossfire, he calls it the Hellfire. It has this little tiny demon logo on the side with a little tiny top hat, basically to tell you, I got a sense of humor, one. Two, I know I'm not a demon, but it's fun to try to be, and it's like a baby demon. That's the, that's the mindset of it. Chrysler and Dodge have been doing such a great job with the Challenger, the Hellcat, the Demon, that if you kind of look into their past, they made kind of some weird stuff. And this is one of those cars. So if you think about it in retrospect or in hindsight, this was the first supercharged SRT ever made. Think about it, SRT4, whether it was the Neon or the Caliber or whatever, all turbo four cylinders. And those are similar to like Mitsubishi engines, essentially. That's so funny to me that the V6 was the first supercharged one and working with Mercedes, which you never seen them do that again. It's not that raspy, which is nice. Like I expected it to be kind of raspy and kind of 
VQ-ish, if that makes sense, like 350Z, 370Z, uh, Mustang V6, all of those make that very raspy noise, but the exhaust on this sounds great. And you can tell there's so much love in this thing. You have the carbon splitter in the front. You have a carbon diffuser in the back. He has the wing on the back, but the Crossfire's body shape is so strange to me. It has the long hood, and then it just all of a sudden goes like an egg in the back. One of my favorite things about the car is that the brake calipers have an inside joke on them that's only in Spanish. I actually got a really funny explanation, so here's that clip about what the joke means. So it says, exactly, exactly, okay. you got it, you got it. Let's repeat that, repeat after us. Cabron, 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 exacto. So here it means two things. Okay. It can either mean friend. Everyone here calls each other. Is it how you say it? Is it's it one of those? Exactly. Okay. So depending on how you say it, it might be your friend. Okay. We call it each other. You can be cabrones. Like, you can do it like, hey, cabron. Hey, cabron. Okay. Like, hey, I, you see? Uh, and you're yeah. cabrones. But okay. if some, if you're like driving around and someone, you know, when that woman did that, <laughs> jumped in front of the yeah. blue, cabron means that the person got okay. cheated on and he's developed horns. Oh. So okay. he's the male. The ball, so he's uh, a cabron or a cabrona, which is the on the other side for the females. Okay. Why I have them like this is if you're in a rally, right? And I'm driving, and you're driving here with your girlfriend on the side, right? And you read it, it's for you because that's the male side, right? But if you're on the other side, she's the one that gets to read it because she's on the passenger side. So that's oh, why that one's okay. cabrona and this one's cabron. I figured it'd be better described by him himself. wondering why the owner fell in love with the Crossfire. Out of all the sports cars in the entire world, he used to have a Shelby GT, and the Shelby GT was essentially the 4.6 retro Mustang, and Hertz had them as well. He was driving around, and he saw this beautiful woman get in this albino Crossfire, right? And he's like, oh yeah, Crossfire, whatever. I'll start playing around, because, you know, pretty girl in the sports car. Let's see what happens. He thinks, I got a V8. It's gonna happen. I'm gonna just blow their doors off. She blows this poor man a kiss and then blows his own doors off in the crossfire. And at that moment, he saw and said, I had to have the crossfire. It all started with a really solid memory and then it became this really fun thing. I keep reaching over here to put down the window and I keep messing up. Like the Terminator, for example, the Terminator, you get a little bit of supercharger wine in the car, mm -hmm. but you get a lot of it out of the car. But it is unfortunate that these cars weren't produced as much as they were, because if I were to see a crossfire at the drag strip, even if you don't like them, you have to admit it, it would be cool to see these at the track more often, because it's so rare and when you see them run a decent time that's even cooler to me because it's a very unexpecting car compared to the normal crossfire they shouldn't even be named the same car they're that different they feel that different it's just bizarre you know saying srt6 is weird if you're not used to saying it that's what got me confused about the caliber for example i'd be wait is that the srt4 or is that the six i could never remember because of the weird body shapes of both the Crossfire and the Dodge. So most of the time it was SRT4 or jump to eight, SRT8, it makes sense. The Jeeps, the Challenger, the Charger. But then this came along and it was like, yeah, it's, it's, it's the Chrysler and it's a Chrysler badge with the SRT on it. That's another weird thing. It's almost all Dodge with SRT. So the car also has upgraded injectors, ported intakes, a straight pipe exhaust, but believe it or not, Yet, yeah, like I said, this is straight pipe, but I did not expect this to be straight pipe. It doesn't sound that loud. It's not annoying, it's not raspy. Resonators, he also modified the shifter. The interior has been buttoned up a lot. There's just a lot of little tiny things because I'm sure the aftermarket support for this is kind of bizarre. It's very limited, so people get creative. I think that's the best way to put that statement. The last time I saw a modified Crossfire was all the way in Arizona. That was the last one I saw, and it was next to an SLK, ironically. So when I came to PR and I got this email, he sent me a few cars, and I was like, Crossfire, I've never driven one. 
I want to see what it's like. The tire lettering looks good on a Crossfire. I never expected that either. All right, you guys, we did it. We drove a Chrysler Crossfire SRT6. Very unique, very strange car. Fun fact before we go, this is the most SRT6s are on Puerto Rico. The like the per square mile, there's the most Crossfire SRT6s. So I thought that was very crazy, and that's why I decided to drive the car as well, because it was part of this culture here. So, what do you guys think of it? Chrysler SRT6, I actually had a good time driving it. It was pretty interesting. Very quirky car, very interesting, very different. On that note, I upload every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and I will see you guys next time, and take it easy. Have a good one. Bye-bye.